thank you for the introduction, <laughs> Franz. Um, so I'm happy to welcome you today to the first part of the software virtualization talk. And I'm going to talk about NeuroDeckin, um, a computing platform for neuro and open science. And first of all, I want to start training to figure out what time it was. Sorry. It's okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, I'm going to talk about your debut. And um, first of all, I want to start out with saying that I'm not an expert in NeuroDebian. Um, I actually just learned about it a couple of weeks ago in a workshop here at the University of Zurich. And uh, we were required to install a software package, as in every workshop. And I spent hours doing this. And in the end, I felt very proud that I managed to install it. But I learned that with NeuroDebian, I would have just needed one line of code, and I would have had the same outcome. So um, this is why I'm standing here today and telling you all about it, because I think you should know <laughs> about this. Um, and um, in, along the same lines, I want to uh, <laughs> show you a graph that is exactly describing what I went through. So there are two um, ways of approaching repetitive tasks. One is like I did, do everything manually and have a learning curve, then feel proud when you reached your goal. Or you could be a bit smarter and have a geeky mindset and um, at some point get annoyed by the repetitive task like installing a software package. And then you write some complicated code, you spend some time, but then when, once it runs, it's very easy and you can use your time for more important things. So. Uh, I want to advocate today the geeky mindset and um, another thing um, that we all struggle with is um, research software um, that like we usually uh, have to decide for one package and there are many different choices to select from and many different platforms and behind every uh, platform stands uh, some developer team and they are usually doing a great job but they um, of course are not that many people um, because they are maybe themselves also researchers and have other tasks to do. So a common problem is that um, the softwares we are using are sometimes not maintained um, um, in a continuous fashion and um, through this um, the quality testing is, is not sufficient or maybe um, bug fixes take a bit longer. So um, these softwares are also typically complicated to install and maintain and you have to be an expert to know how to install it. Um, and at some point developers leave because they might be PhD students or postdocs themselves and they have a new job and the softwares just um, are in a state of limbo. So um, the solution to all of these problems why don't we share the same open platform um, that is easy to access, easy to install, and easy to maintain? So this is the dream scenario, right? There is only one platform and we all use it, and this way we solve all of the problems. So these two guys have the same idea and the same vision. Um, they develop new Debian. Um, Yaroslav Pachenko from the Center for Cognitive Neuroscience in Dartmouth and Michael Hanke from the University of Magdeburg. I'm sure many of you know them. Um, so their vision was that together um, we can create an integrated computing platform that we all freely share, that we use to exchange ideas and data and um, that we maintain collaboratively. And this would solve this problem of having only a very small developer workforce because we all work together. And everything I'm talking about today is written in their paper, Open is Not Enough, published in Frontiers in Neuroinformatics in 2012. So if you want to read up on the details, um, just visit this paper and it's all written in there. So finally, um, I want to talk about what NeuroDebian is. For me, um, I had 
not heard about it before, and I took a bit of time to grasp the concept. So it's an integrated community driven computing platform for neuroscience. And um, originally, it started out as a small project to um, provide software for neuroscientists. And actually, the developers just developed it for themselves because they thought it's making things easier. And today, um, it grew uh, into a large platform that provides many packages for several disciplines like electrophysiology, neural modeling, psychophysics, and distributed computing. And very important, NeuroDebian uses Debian operating system. So and the strategy of NeuroDebian is to help scientists and developers integrate the software into the Debian operating system and make use of its advantages. So what is Debian? Um, we, talk about, we talked about Linux today and its advantages. And Debian is just one flavor, one distribution of Linux. And the advantages of using your Debian um, and having um, Debian as the foundation is that Debian is free, isn't that great? And open to anyone. <laughs> So uh, it's based on the principle of duocracy. So anyone can contribute um, and, for example, write his own software package. And then the person, who, the contributor, is finally also responsible for his own software package. It is very easy and fast to install something on Debian. It only takes minutes. And um, Debian has a lot of strict, very strict open standards. And um, the advantages that come along with this so, uh, is that main, all the parts, all the bits and pieces of software are working together because they follow open standards. And this, of course, enhances reproducibility and it makes maintenance much easier. Um, then Debian is one of its kind is like the largest software archive with more than 29,000 pieces of software. So it's a huge library and we can use it to um, build software packages on top of this library that is already stable and reliable. And this way, um, if you have, um, so this is the next point actually, um, that um, Debian provides um, standardized binary and source distribution. This is a similar point, as I mentioned before, about the strict open standards. Um, that, for example, two researchers write their own software package in Debian, and they do something completely different. Still, they can help each other out when they have a problem with their package, because it, it's based on the same source distribution. Um, and last but not least, but most important for us, it runs on any hardware relevant for neuroscience research, and we will hear a bit later what this means. It's, um, so in a nutshell, Debian is open, it's accessible, and reproducible. And NeuroDebian um, has been adopted very quickly worldwide. Um, there are thousands of researchers worldwide using it, and it's growing at the moment, so there are 20 new subscriptions every day. You see it's very um, focused on Europe and the US. And a more practical um, thing to talk about is uh, what packages exist in Eurodebian. Um, I think that's what interests you all the most. Uh, can I really use this? So there are different fields, um, and there are different fields covered. For example, packages for magnetic resonance imaging, and that's what most of us interest in most. And popular uh, packages are FNI, FSL, IMDP, or NiPy. And um, besides these individual packages, um, Eurodebian offers a complete virtual machine that can be used on any major operating system. And that's what I was talking about when I said it runs on any hardware. It runs, but this is the but. You have to um, 
install a virtual machine, for example, on Mac. So I have to install the virtual machine and then work in this uh, virtual machine. But I will show you now um, practically how this is done, and it's really easy. So as a wrap-up, how can you use it? How can you benefit? And that's also what I asked myself when I heard about it. What does it benefit me? It's free. I can install it anywhere. I can save my time <laughs> installing a package and taking hours for it, and instead spend my time more on my research that really interests me. Uh, I can use it as a platform for teaching, for example. So if you give a class, and you all probably know this problem that your students could not install the software, you can just make sure that they all have the same environment. and. Um, throughout the class, and if there is a problem, you know how to react to it. This um, takeaway environment is also useful, for example, for collaboration. So you can work together with someone across the globe, and you can make sure they have the same environment as you. Or for multi-model or multidisciplinary projects that require a lot of different software, that require the um, installation of a lot of different software, packages, and um, it's very easy to do in your lab. The longitudinal studies where you have to make sure that um, your um, results are reproducible. So this is another point. You can um, simulate an environment in that one that you had earlier on in research. And this way you can make sure that your results are and finally, all of this point contribute to open science and reproducibility, which is our primary goal. Right. So let's come to the fun part, <laughs> to the practical demonstration. I will show you what fascinated me so much. And you don't have to follow along. I will, it's really easy. I will just quickly show how I installed it and how you can install the package or update the system and you can find the lines of code on this slide. So let's go. Okay, 
you see on the beginner. Um, yeah. Oh no. I tried to work at the Um okay, I agree. And now it's importing the virtual disk image into the virtual box that I downloaded earlier and I can assure you it, it's easy. Otherwise I'm not show you this. Um, so I already had Neurodebian imported because I just wanted to have a backup in case it doesn't work today, you never know. But <laughs> let's try with this um, imported image. And in the settings, I have to click on shared folders. It's on German here, but I should say it in English. And um, this is very important. I have to select a directory where I have my data that I want to work with. I just choose one to show you. And then I have to select, I have to enter a folder name called Hoax. So this is kind of a virtual um, folder. It's, it's just that um, your Debian recognizes this folder, um, but it doesn't change your directory. I click OK, and your Debian is ready to use. I will use the version I already installed before because otherwise it will load some packages and take a lot of time and I don't want you to wait. So this is how the virtual box looks like. And what we can do here is for example we could upgrade we could update the system with one line of code. Let's install a package. What should I install? <laughs> Maybe FSL. So now it's installing FSL. I don't have to do anything. And let's see other functionalities in the virtual box. So um, here, when I click on your Debian, I see different fields. Um, that are covered by <coughs> NeuroDebian packages. And for example, if I go on Psychophysics, and I would click on PsychoPy because this um, package interests me, it would ask me if I want to install it, and I could just click yes. So you, there are several options to install packages, either via the command line, but there's also um, optionality, options to um, install packages via um, the menu. For example, you can go into settings and start the package manager. This requires a password and it's surprise your Debian. Okay. Ah, we have to let the installation um, complete first. And um, once you you have a package installed, you will see, for example, here in medical imaging, there is FSL and FSLU. It will have a green point whenever it is installed. And it's almost there. Oh, I could also show you the virtual machine. Setup wizard, if you click on this, it um, guides you through an automated process where it asks you if you want to install, install the common packages. And this wizard also runs an upgrade. For example, here it recommends me that packages such as Epi and FSL provide large collections of command line tools. And um, if I want to get those files sourced automatically from my environment, and I can decide yes or no. I can um, select if I want to um, install any of these packages. I would like to install R. I would like to install a Python library for neuroimaging. 
and so on. So this wizard is <coughs> making installation a bit easier, but you can run everything from the command line too. Okay. I didn't want to open the web page, but... So now FSL is installed, and let's check if it works. <coughs> let's open FSL views. Oh, it works. So that was it. I'm done. I can go and do my research. Yes. If, uh, if you would like to reproduce the work of a colleague and you know specifically which versions of the packages he used, can you specify the version of FSL which you want Neuro Debian to install? So I saw that yes. you installed some parts of 509 and some parts of 508. What if I want 506? How yeah. do I tell it that? You can do that. I mean, I showed this because um, this is a um, very, very slim version of FSL and uh, it's very fast to install. And while showing you um, this here, I thought it's easier, but there's a lot of versions of FSL you can install, and you can find this. Um, so, what, what would be the online. syntax to install FSL 506 from the command line? Um, let's see, I can um, search it online. Let's check your Debian um, FSL 5.6. 5.0. 5.0, So, um, Okay, install this package, and you have the command but here. This is like a generic 5.0 thing, I don't know which, which version it is, this is like not, not the full version. Okay. So th this could be anything, it could be 5.0.6.8.9, how do you know which one it actually is? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, actually, I, I don't know. I ah, okay, look, it says there, so it seems they provide like different versions for different architectures. Yeah, apparently. But like fixed versions, so you can't vary the version if you're on one specific architecture. Does anyone know if you can? Because I'm sure there are your Debian experts in YouTube. So the general Debian uh, thingy, you have to check for the versions. It's a little bit more complicated, but yeah. uh, all included in this app. Uh, so this APT tool, and there you can check for the versions that are available, and all the older versions are available. Oh, okay. So I, see. I, I think you. It's in the package manager that I actually didn't show you yet. I wanted to show you because. Uh, so you won't see in the package manager because this is always showing oh. the latest version. Okay. But if you go to the command line, mm -hmm. uh, and there, but you would have to ask Google for a for a really correct syntax. So okay. It's, it was app search and then the versions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you can search for the available versions of a specific toolbox. Okay. And mostly they provide some older versions, and then you can refer to the to the name for this distribution and the name of the toolbox. So as you have seen, like for um, what was it, the Red Hat, it's 5.04. Yes, um, and even for Debian, you would have to look for yeah. the, the name of the Okay, because here it looks like they just have one. Yeah. Okay, well, interesting. But, yeah, I mean, I also would have to look um, into this, um, but I also would say it's possible to install a specific. So just check for this cache version option, and there you will find the syntax. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's check for this afterwards. I'm interested in it too. So, I mean, this is really, um, one last thing I want to show you, the package manager. So, um, for example, if you want to look what is there, what kind of neuroimaging packages are there, I just search for neuroimaging and I see the packages that are provided. And I can select the ones I want to install. But what I can also do is, if I already have installed all the packages that I need, I want to update them. I just um, mark all packages that require changes or upgrade, and I apply the mark changes. And here I can see which packages will be upgraded, which ones will be installed. And when I click on apply, this will be upgraded and installed automatically. So these are re really the easy functionalities, but I'm sure you can also 
um, customize um, more of what you install on here, but yeah, I would also have to look into this a bit deeper. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>